Hello, Mr. Bunny. Can you actually hear me? Testing. Okay, so I'm still not sure if I can be heard or not. Oh, loud and clear. Okay, cool. Right, I'll I'll hold on a bit to see if to, to get the stragglers. Like I'm not used to doing webinars, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, so we had about 180 people register. So it'd be interesting to see how many people turn up. I'll try and follow in the in the chat, but I'll probably be concentrating on other stuff at the same time. And there, there will be a big Q and A section at the end. Well, hopefully not a big Q and A. Hopefully there won't be too many questions. But we'll see. Right. I'm going to try and keep this to about an hour. It may have run, it may not. I've not actually done a live test. Your wife just texted me, which you can probably hear. So there's a 12 second delay between what I'm saying and what you're seeing. That'll be fun. So I'll put a post it note on my monitor to say slow down because I know I can get a bit carried away and talk faster than I'm excited. So, we were talking about SAS. I might have just a little bit of bump while we're waiting for other people to join us. Like, I've been working on a software suite called Celeramp since I began about four years ago. And like SAS has been like a part of that suite, which really started properly about six months ago. And it's got to the like, stage it is now, but there's bits in there from, say, four years ago. Yeah. Okay, I'll give another couple of minutes before I get started. Um, one thing I would suggest is if you're not already a member in the Facebook group, if you go and join the Celeramp Beta group, any questions you can post in there, I'll get back to you or somebody else will get back to you. And if for any reason this webinar gets cut off or whatever, but if you're in that group, you'll, be able to, you'll still be able to sort of join. Right, so we've got, again, we recognize a few names in the group, which is nice. Right. right. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not used to doing webinars and stuff like this. But I'll, I'll be better once it gets going. But I thank the wife for actually doing these, doing my slides for me. They look a lot more professional than if I'd done them myself. Okay, how long do you normally leave for people to get, to get started? Four minutes. Uh, give it a couple more. Do you have anybody's got any questions now that you want me to answer before we actually get into the sort of the meat of it? Let me know. Because that will give me something to talk about. And um, assuming everybody can understand me okay. So now I've got something of um, a northern accent. Yeah. Okay, I forget there's like a 12 minute, a 12 second delay. Okay. Well, what I'll do, I'll, I'll get started now because I don't want to do a, a, a big long webinar. We've all got sort of evenings and stuff to do. So I will try and get straight to the point. Like, I am, this will probably be the least sales webinar you'll ever hear because I'm not a salesperson. But a salesperson I really respect to tell me webinars was the best way of selling stuff. So here we are, doing a webinar. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is SAS, which is Sourcing Analysis Simplified. Right. Okay, I'm actually just, yeah, getting started. So sourcing Analysis Simplified. Right. Oops, let me get to my presentation. So I'll tell you a little bit about me. I've been doing FBM, well, more FBA for four plus years. I thought it was five plus, but the wife told me it was four. Uh, it kind of feels more like 10. I have done seven figures in sales in Amazon. I've done like OA, RA, wholesale, a bit of PL. Uh, I've invested in multiple different Amazon businesses from like from healthcare, toys, stationery. Um, I've got fingers in quite a few different pies. 
My passion's more in software development. I've been developing software for like 30 plus years, probably 40 plus years if I go back to doing games as a kid. Um, and that's kind of a, that's kind of about me. So what I like to do is combine software development with my Amazon business. So, so I started off by creating tools which would help me. And then other people wanted these tools and I thought, yeah, I'll turn my tools into a suite and go from there. Right. I'll put the group link up again. I saw Amanda's posted it in the chat. That's the best place. If, if you lose me for whatever, any questions, I don't answer here. Post them in the group and I'll get back to you. Okay. So what is SAS? So it's sourcing analysis simplified. Right. It's mobile app, web app, Chrome extension. And I, I, I did mess around with Alexa doing it as a skill, but it, an Alexa skill doesn't really work for what SAS does. It might work for something else in the future, but we'll see about that. So with the mobile apps, it's on Android and iPhone. Web apps, obviously, on the web. Chrome extension, you can use it in Chrome. I'll go through each of these in detail. Well, a bit of detail. So first bit is mobile app. So it's Android and, and iOS. You can like quickly scan a barcode, it will send you to the actual results page. You can do a manual search from the app. Like the apps, you've got a torch with an array in the dark. You can make it vibrate so you know when it's actually done a scan. And you can access your like scan history and you can also access like your options. At the moment with the apps, they're in beta in both app stores. I do need to approve people to be able to download and use them. But that's a, it's a pretty fast process. Like we've been we've been testing this now for it's been four months in private test. I think I've had the apps working probably for about five months. So they've they've gone through a fair bit of testing, a fair few changes and improvements. So mobile app is designed for doing RA, obviously, but you, you can use it for well anytime you want to do a research. So alongside the mobile app, we've got a Chrome extension. So you can use a Chrome extension on just about any website. There's a few security concerns on some sites, which you've got to, I'm sort of finding ways to bypass. But the way the Chrome extension works, you select your text on the website, right click, do the, like SAS, whatever your text is, it'll then bring up the results on that web page. And then you can, like, you'll see the results in the Chrome extension are the same as the results you'll see on the mobile app and on the web app. Um, so this is great if, you, if you're doing manual manual sourcing, copy and paste sourcing. You can actually do it all without leaving the website. Also, the Chrome extension obviously works on Amazon. If you go, if you go to um, an Amazon page, it will auto, if SAS is enabled, it will automatically load. It'll give you like all the SAS information and it actually does this without sort of, um, sort of breaking, not breaking the Amazon page, but sort of cluttering it up with other stuff. Like the window sort of sits on the side. What I'll try and do is quickly share that so I can like go away from the slide and into a window. Not tried this yet, so this can be fun. So I will do. I've turned up screen sharing, turned it back on again. We'll go to this one. So now I should hopefully be sharing. Yeah, so this is like the, the an Amazon page. So we have the SAS results on, on the side. I'm dual monitors, it's going to look like I'm looking in the other direction. So you can see you can scroll down your Amazon page, you can scroll down your SAS results, which we'll go into in much more detail in a bit. Like this is, so I've got my keeper extension because everybody needs keeper. And then if I, like this is all just kind of unprepared. So if I go into another product, you've got SAS enabled, so product loads, then the SAS will load. So again, you can like scroll down, you've got a normal Amazon listing and you've got SAS on the side. Yeah, you can move SAS off the side. You can have it as a floating window. Or you can dock it on the other side, which whichever you prefer. 
then you close SAS down as simple as that. Continue your browsing. Go back there. And if you want to bring SAS back, you just push the SAS button. It'll re reload give you, and give you all these, all, the, all these sort of juicy SAS information. Okay, then, so I did it with boots. This is one that I did actually look at earlier. So I'll just refresh that. So if you were doing like your copy and paste, copy and paste sourcing, so I think, yeah, this Peppa Pig hair thing, 13 pound, it's on, I think it's on a three for two. So, okay, get me my top cash back. So all I'll do, Yeah, my mouse has stopped working for some reason. Select the text, right click, hello, SAS Peppa Pig Hacker. So it brings up two, two different results. I'll go for the top one. There we go, then you get like the SAS information for that. And again, I will go into what the SAS information is in a bit. Right. Now I'll go back to the webinar, hopefully. I'll go back to my slides, which, yeah. Is this a good speed for everybody? I think I've got to wait 12 seconds before I can see any reply to that. All right, so if you want to get into any more detail on anything, so there will be the Q&A at the end. Um, somebody just asked about, is this just a barcode or will it do image search? Yeah, I'll come back to that in the um, Q&A at the end. Um, so is the software for retail arbitrage and online arbitrage? Yes, it is. It's also being used for health soil. Right, Ooh, let me go back, back, back. So to the Chrome extension, so you've got a mobile app for doing RA, Chrome extension, for doing copy and paste sourcing. I'd also like for checking you on Amazon listings. We've also got the web app, which runs on any device. It's responsive, so it will work to like any screen size, will display more columns. You can view the history of from other devices. And um, like when I designed this, I designed it for mobile from the offset. I also made it so it would scale. So you could run it on like I run off M37 inch screens, it looks great on lows, or like a six and a half inch mobile screen, it works as well. So those are like your three sort of interfaces into SaaS. You've got your web app, your Chrome extension, and your mobile apps. All right, what they're going to then talk to is what I'm just going to call the SaaS brain. Well, the SaaS apps talk to the brain, the brain's cloud based, it runs on multiple speakers, speakers? servers so the brain will handle the request it does its thing and then it actually returns the results to whichever sort of app requested it and the results are normally the same across all apps there's a few little there's a few little differences at the moment because you can do things in a mobile phone which you can't do in an extension you can do things in an extension which you can't do on a website and i'll go i'll go into that maybe a bit more but at, at the moment let me just go out 90, 5% of the stuff is the same on all devices. So the, the way we actually display the information is what's called SAS panels. So the first SAS panel is the most obvious one. It tells you what the product is. So you've got the product title, manufacturer, what the asset is. And like you display multiple images for the product. Like the images are all optimized for mobile, so they're resized so you can download them quickly, you're not using your bandwidth up, and they'll only download on, on demand. Um, we use multiple images, so if you're doing RA, you, you've got a box in front of you, the barcode matches, you want to make sure the box matches. So then you can, you can flip through the images and check making sure it is exactly the same product. Like, you know, like Disney changes their packaging every year. Listings often change, not always. Some people will sell a different packaging against a listing. That's up to you. But this way, you'll know like the, 
what the packaging is on the list and compared to the packaging you've got on your hand or the packaging on another website. And again, when I do another demo, I'll show you how you can just flip between the images. Now, the star rating and reviews kind of is what it says it is. So this way you can see if it's a good product that you're buying, if it's got how many reviews it's got. Like one of the embarrassing things when I first started doing RA, I made my one of my buying decisions, well, one of my primary buying decisions was how many reviews does it have, rather than looking at sales rank or other useful information like that. Next up is what category is it in? Again, I think that, that kind of goes without saying. I'm going to slide nine. I'm just going. I'm going through this at a fairly decent speed. So your product box, it's 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 pretty obvious what it is. It's pretty straightforward. So the next SaaS one, the next SaaS panel is sales rank and prices. So you put in your sales rank. Sorry, it, it tells you what sales rank is. Like in your options, you say if you want what percent, what sort of top percentage of products do you want? Like it would default, I think, to 2%. So you'll get like, it will show you what percentage it's in of the top products in that category. You're going to get a green thumbs up if it meets your criteria. Get a thumbs down if it doesn't. Right. This then also shows you what the buy box is. It shows you the Amazon listing, like who has the buy box? Is it Amazon? Is it a different listing? So you've got your lowest FBA, a number of FBA sellers, the lowest FBM, number of FBM sellers. We can also show the, like this one's currently showing the current price, which is like a snapshot in time. You can also show all of these prices and sales rank because like an average 30 day, 90 day, 180 day, and also like average since like keeper tracking began, which is really useful. So, so that's, a, that's a sales rank and prices panel. Next up is the max cost price. So in your options, you enter what your, your buying criteria is. So by default, we look at the return of investment of 30% and minimum profit of three pound. So this is telling you what the maximum cost price has to be to meet your, your criteria. And like this takes into account your VAT status, what the um, Amazon fees are, what other fees you've entered, and obviously what the, what other costs that you've got. We are going to en enhance this box because it does look pretty boring at the moment. And it's probably one of the most important boxes saying like what your max cost is. Because like, one of the reasons behind this is so instead of you entering the cost, you can scan an item in a store, see an item on a website, and instead of typing in what the cost is, it will say your max cost is nine. If it's five pound, and it meets your criteria, you know this is going to be a good buy without even having to key anything in. So after your max cost panel, we've got your keeper graphs. So these, these are native keeper graphs. They will display your green sales rank line. You do not need a keeper subscription. We will we actually display a sales rank line for you, whether you've got a keeper subscription or not. Do a single click. We'll change your time scale, let's say seven days, 30 days, 90, blah, 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 blah. And you can also look at the different marketplaces. If anybody's been following me for a while, I did like an international keeper charts, last Q4, which is like a free extension for displaying all of the keeper charts next to each other. Um, I, yeah, I just moved this into here. But, well, a longer story short, that it, the international keeper charts is what starts to be on converting what was a simple profit calculator into SAS. So keeper graphs are great. So they'll work without a keeper subscription, but I'd still get a keeper subscription, to be honest. Right, next SAS panel. This is like the profit calculator. What happens by default is we'll put in your max cost for you. We will put in the most likely sale price. This then calculates what your like, profit is, return of investment. If they meet, meet your criteria, they'll be in green, as you can see on this one. Um, you've got your total fees. You can, you can expand that and it'll show you what your fees are, so your referral fee, FBA fee. You've got an EFN fee, which I'll come on to later. Uh, you've got storage fees, so you, you can change how many months something's in storage and your fees will adjust accordingly. You can set a prep fee for thing, a miscellaneous fee, 
and you can add a, a miscellaneous percentage onto your cost. So this does take into account your VAT status. I'll show you again a bit later about the marketplace selling. And like all of these adjustments are instant. Which I'll, I'll quickly um, go back to the uh, the SAS, the SAS, um, well, one of the SAS screens. I say quickly, it's not that quickly because I'm not used to this yet. So on the uh, on a SAS screen here, what I'll do, I'll do the, the full SAS, the actual SAS app, just because it's easier to share it. If like this is all, I said before, it's all responsive. So if I, I'll change the size of this just to make it a bit bigger so you can actually see it better. So if I go in and change the cost, you'll see the other figure, the actual return of investment and your profit will sort of change instantly. If I go down, change the sale price, again, it'll instantly change. So whilst I'm here, I'll show you the, um, going back to these prices and sales rank but sort of panel where we can change to get your 30 day, so your average 30 day, average 90, 180, yeah, average since tracking began. And you'll see like you see, you see sales rank changes, well not in this case, prices change. And like, then you can see the buy box when it's on the sort of current snapshot. So I'll mostly show you the keeper graphs whilst I'm here. So what we do with the keeper graphs, we download them on demand, just so you're not downloading, because there could be a 30 possible different graphs on display here. And you don't want to download them if you're not going to look at them. So download them as and when. Okay, I will get onto the other marketplaces in a bit. Right, so if I go back to the presentation, um, is this a good speed for people? I don't, like, I know I can get a bit carried away. So if anybody wants me to slow down, let me know. But I can, I can always go back and repeat things afterwards. Right. So I'll turn off screen sharing, turn it back on. Screen sharing back on. Go to PowerPoint slides. Share. Okay. So back to the PowerPoint slides, hopefully. Right, so that's your profit calculator panel. Right, and this is my favourite one. This is the other marketplaces. Right, so what, what this does, well, it, it, by looking at it, you can see what it does. So this displays what your profit will be and your return of investment in the other European Amazon marketplaces after EFN fees. Like, we, we pull the exchange rate in if the hour, um, so you can see the, so you see the sales rank, and like what I think is a really sexy bit of this. If you select any of those now, it will instantly change in the profit calculator. So I think this is better by actually demoing it. So I will go back to the other screen, which I might, might get faster. So back on the other screen. Hopefully, yeah. So, so, so that's on the web app. This would be exactly the same on the extension or on the mobile. So, like, well, so your mobile is going to kind of look like that. Um, if you have it on um, an iPad, it looks a bit like that, or your web app like that. So, I'll, I'll do it this size. So, I think that's big enough for you to see. So now. If I want to look in France, just click on France, load your keeper graph, it changes the price to euros, it shows you what the fees are, you've got your EFN fee, and it shows you your profits after your EFN fees and your other fees. All right, we can do this on all the other marketplaces. So see, it changes in here. So it changes your sales rank, so this is in Germany, you've got your prices, all of these you can change instantly. And again, you keep it, you can change. You go in, if you change your cost. Like when, when you flip between these, we you keep your cost the same. Because like typically you might be selling on a different marketplace, but your cost is still the same price. 
And well, while I'm here, I'm thinking about it, just so I don't forget. Other quick thing you can do is so you can see we've got all these prices here. If you want to see, I want to do FBM, I'm going to match this guy. If you just click on the FBM price, that will copy it straight over into your sale price and that the calculator changes accordingly. You, you, you can probably tell it. Um, I sell on Amazon. I've actually done this because this is how, what I wanted. Um, I've been in brainstorms with various people. There's been a lot of thought put into this, like what as a seller, what do we actually need? Uh, and I think this is a solution. Okay, I'll go back to the slides. Are you doing this presenting like isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be? Yeah, he says. Yeah, I probably just jinxed myself there. Okay, so going back to the slides. So, yeah, so that's the SaaS panel, the other marketplace. It's my favorite. It's great. I love it. <laughs> right. So moving on from the other marketplaces, what we've got here is a, it's an, this is an optional panel. It's geolocation. When I when I first put this in, I, I, I kind of just thought it looked it looks cool, <laughs> but it, it's also useful if you want to be able to track where you did your scanning. But then when I showed it to the beta group and I said, "What about privacy? I don't want to share that." So I, I took that on board, and so what what, we've, what I've done with it now is it's double opt-in, which basically means you have got to sort of authorize your phone to share the location with SAS. If you don't do it, SAS won't know your location, can't do anything. And if, if your phone does share the location, you've also got to tell SAS you want to save the location and sort of display the location. So like, it, it, it can't happen accidentally. Like, all the data, we, well, we don't share any data at all. We wouldn't share this. It's all stored securely, but I understand privacy concerns. Like, you're on an RA trip, yeah, you don't want other people seeing where you're going. So like this is purely opt-in. So we won't show it anyway, but just to, to, to give you that sort of, what's the word? Peace of mind, knowing like, yeah, you're not showing your location. We're not storing your location unless you ask us to twice. Okay, so that's your optional geolocation. Right, moving on, we've got some other SAS panels. So. You sell essential one, it quickly lets you add a product to sell essential. So if you're either on it, this is most useful when you're using the extension. If you're on an Amazon page, you can add a product. You can check if it's already, sorry, excuse me, check if it's already in your inventory or check if you've had any orders. Right. So can we have a drink? Right. Search again, kind of does what you expect it to. You can key in search again. If you've got a barcode scanner, you can scan a barcode into the search again box. Click search and then, yeah, it'll search again. Like freshness. What, what we do is we, we play with an awful lot of data. So we're using different algorithms to try and build up a cache. So basically for speed. So we'll show you the last time it was checked. If you click update, we'll check it again for you now and that will all update without you leaving the page. Right, your VAT settings, this is, a, this is an optional one to display, because normally you'll set your VAT settings up once, you don't need to change it on each scan. But it's good for doing demos. And we are gonna be adding other bits into the VAT settings box for people that do grocery, grocery where you've got zero rates and, and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's actually very interesting when you're looking at the actual profits and fees Flicking your, your, changing your sort of VAT scheme from like non-registered to, to standard rate or flat rate. And um, I've just seen the massive difference what VAT makes. Okay, so that's your other SAS panels. <sighs> Jeez, they give it all away then. That was close. So I'm, I'm not supposed to use the mouse. So after your SAS panels, this is like where we're at now with SAS and what the future of SAS is. Right, we've been in private beta now for I think it's four months. Um, we've made lots of changes. I had to do a major rework when Amazon moved the goalposts on, on um, using MWS. So that's all done. Like this would have been released quite a while ago if that hadn't happened. But we're still in beta. We're moving to public beta, so there'll be the odd hiccup. 
it isn't perfect. It will never be absolutely perfect. But being beta, we're getting there. And I, I am very fast to respond to any problems. I do, I do rapid development where I will quite often see if somebody will request something in the morning, it could be in the same day. Right, so we've got a lot more additions coming. So we're launching in the UK first, yay. Other marketplaces are in the works. Like the European one is done. I need to check how the VAT works in Europe. Um, US, I am working on. And I, it's close, it's very close. We've got more SaaS panels in the works. So we've got like other sellers offers. What I'll show you is what it sounds, other offers. We're also doing the stock count on, a, on the sort of what your other sellers have. We're going to be showing restricted items. Another one, eBay listing. And we've got a lot of different ideas for different sort of information that we can display on like different SaaS panels. Right. I've kept like the, the cost of this to a minimum. Um, like I've done a majority of the development myself. Sean is my mobile phone specialist. He does a bit of work. He charges me mate rates, which is great. I've done no marketing. There's no affiliate scheme in this beta launch. And like, so there's minimal outside developments. I am starting to bring other, de other developers on board. So I am going to build a team up around this. Um, this because this project started quite small. It's grown and grown. And I think it's got a lot of potential. So packages, I'm doing two. There's a getting started package and a getting serious package. So with the getting started, you'll, have, you'll get well, with both packages, you're going to get access to the mobile app, the Chrome extension and the web app. So getting started, yeah, one web, one phone install, two Chrome installs and one web app active session. So you can have the web app open on multiple machines anywhere in the world, but you can only have one open at once. And you can do a thousand scans per, per month on the getting started package. What we've found in the beta is a thousand scans is enough for the majority of people. Not everybody, but the majority of people, a thousand scans is plenty. Um, now the getting serious, and this isn't getting serious with Amazon or getting started with Amazon. This is like getting started with SaaS or getting serious with SaaS. So getting serious, you've got three phone installs. The way I'd use it, I've got a tablet. I'd put it on a tablet. I'd use it on my phone. And if I was going out, going shopping, I'll put it on the wife's phone as well. Right. Chrome extension installs, we'll do five. So you've got home, office. You could get VAs using it. Um, that's something I've not really looked at that much yet. But I think five installs, yeah, it kind of works. And you can have three web, um, active web sessions. Um, John, does the, sorry, every now and again, I will see a message. Does a thousand scans include using the X? Yes, the, the thousand scans is in between all of the all of the different apps. Okay, we'll, both of these subscriptions, you'll be grandfathered in or the life of the subscription. I did. I asked various people how much they'd pay, and I've been offered thousands not to release it to anybody else. But, uh, I, most people don't like to say how much they think it's worth, because they think, if they say too much, I'll charge too much. If they say too little, I'll, anyway, right, I'm going to get I'm going to get straight on with it, because I said I'm not a salesperson. I thought long and hard about these. So for the getting started package, the price is eleven pound fifty. Sorry, eleven pound ninety five a month. Um, so, Alison, sorry, what is a web active se active session? So, um, an active session basically, if you're on a website, you, that's an active session. If somebody else is on it in your account, that's their active session. But only one of you can be on the account at once. So, anyway, so the getting started package is eleven pound ninety five. Uh, this is. So this is for the public beta. The price will most likely go up. I know what it's like when you're starting out. There's so many tools out there, the costs add up. So I really wanted to create something where it's, re it's really good value. Um, and like, you'll get started with it. Hopefully at some point you'll get serious. So I think 11.95 I think is a good, well, as good a price as I could actually do. 
Now, on the, the getting serious package, again, so more users, it's got unlimited scans. I'll put a star next to that because that's like within reason. Like if, if you're doing scans like continually, 24 hours a day, 30 days a month, I've, I'm going to have issues. So it's, like, it's, it's, it's fair use. Um, if, if you're using it in a serious way, fine. But like, yeah. Um, with that, we'll, we'll come to that. If, if I see anybody who's just doing absolutely ridiculous scans, then I'll say. But like, in the actual beta, we've done like now we've done about 24,000 scans and we've not had any issues whatsoever. So, the getting serious package. Dun dun dun, drum roll. It's £15.95. And again, that'll be grandfathered in for life. So, those are the two packages. Um, I'm not sure how long the public beta will stay open for. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this as a, um, you must order now or anything like that. But look, once this is ready, then I, I will release it. And like, I will need to take the price up so I can actually do some marketing and things like that. But I think this is also like a big thank you to people for testing this. That's why I'm, one of the reasons doing it as cheap as it is, because like, help me test it, make this the best that we possibly can. Um, <laughs> I've been messing around with webinar jam. I, I can do links to the packages, but I've not found a really nice, easy way of doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to do some copy and pasting in a bit. Okay, right. So I'm going to move on. That's right, so Q and A time. Before I do the Q and A, uh, well, thank you, bloody well. Oh no, I did a page thanking all the people that helped, and I've not put it in. Uh, I, I won't try and do it reading the names off, otherwise I'm going to miss people out, and that wouldn't be fair. So, Q, I'll do a Q and A. If anybody's got any questions, they want a demo of any of the features, hold your hand up now, and, and we can go. Um, what, what I'll do, I'll start going through the questions. Um, Now, I'm not sure if there's Alison at the top of my wife typing these questions in, or if we've got another Alison on, on the webinar. <laughs> but, okay, will there be a tutorial to refer to? Yes. It's not It's not ready yet. I've spent most of my time creating this. Um, Phil Dyke says, can I... Hmm? So, sorry, say... So... Right, so I've got a fair few wows. Darius, app will crash in a few minutes. Everyone from join for the price. What a value. Great job, all. Thank you, Darius. I really hope it doesn't crash in a few minutes. If it, if it does, we'll fix it. <laughs> so, holy moly, what a price. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you. Sign me up now. Getting serious. I, I will be posting links up shortly. Karen's well, well, well. Excellent. Emma's incredible price. You're giving it away. Thank you. Now, can you upgrade the Getting Started package if you would need to? You will be able to, you cannot yet. I only created a subscription system last night, well, this week. I finished it early this morning. Like, actually, taking money for this was the last thing I've actually done. So at the moment, no, you can't, but yeah, I'll find a way to that. Yes, you can. Um, it might have you considered annual pricing. Yes, there will be, probably not in this beta stage, is, I don't as I, yeah, there will be, but not yet. Yeah, Amanda, yeah, Amanda was one of the four people that knew the price. He said it was great. Yes, it was. So, on to the, will there be a tutorial to refer to? Yes. Yeah, so, yes, there will be. There isn't one yet, but yeah, we'll do video tutorials and all that gubbins. And what I'll probably do is even do some prizes in the groups. So, you know, you do as a tutorial. If you publish it, we'll give you something or other. Right. Um, Phil says, can you do a demo of the app on your phone? Yes, I can. How well that will come across, I don't know. Right. Um, so, I'm on a stupidly expensive iPhone with the silly cameras. Um, so, now, I don't know if this is going to work, doing a demo like this. So, right, so I'll turn my vibrate on, you might be able to hear it. 
So like I've actually got um I'm trying to think of the better way of me doing this. I should I should have um, foresaw this question to be fair. Right. So what would happen was yeah, right. So here's uh, my products which I would scan. I'd look for the barcode. Um, Try not to shake. My arm is shaking a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Right, I've actually got some weird lighting in here. Wow. Yeah, but I'm really pleased I am demoing that. Let me just have some, a different barcode. Oh, sorry. Right, I've got a really strange lighting setup here, which isn't working on. Let me see if I can turn the light on the camera. Ah, hang on a minute. <laughs> I think I might have started an older version. Yeah, scan. Dip. Dip. Oh, what I'll do, I can display the results, how they would look. So now this is when So I'm just going to switch to one of my the app development part. Let's switch in screens. Let's go to da -da -da -da. yeah. Yeah. So the way this will look. You can't, you can't see anything. Can you not see anything? You can see the slides. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right. So I've just switched. So if I turn that to phone mode, so this is actually how it would look on um, on an iPhone 5. So you've got all the information from the web app. And again, you can ch change your marketplaces, change all your prices. So yeah, so that's like the phone version. Okay, we go back to. I'll, I'll keep on. I'll keep the app there for any other demos. Can we see this webinar again? It kept crashing every few minutes. I missed a lot. Yeah, the the the, um, the the webinar will be there. Will be a replay of it. Right, Alison uh, Benson, thank you. <laughs> Where do we sign up? Right, actually, what I'll do, I'll post a link in here now for the. Um, Oh, well, I might as well go for the getting serious one first. Right, give me a couple of seconds. I've got, I've got to sort of create this off. Uh, yeah, see, I'm, I'm not a professional at this. Uh, so, right. so, SAS getting serious. Yeah. Uh, if you were on the um, beta program before, if you signed up with the same email address, it will automatically upgrade your previous account. If, if you're new to SAS, it will create you a new account. You'll get an email telling you what to do. Now then. So a, let's have a look. Preview, getting serious. Okay, come on, webinar, John. Okay, so getting serious is that's my fault. I didn't put in the price. Preview, getting serious. Okay, so I've added the offer. Um, I think you could. Yeah. What what I'll do, I'll also I'll post a link to it's in the group as well in the chat. So they're getting. I'm like you. You have to confirm this when you go to the payment page and everything. 
So I'll actually link to the getting serious. I'll do the getting started as well here. Okay. Oh, like, so we, we asked Lynn Peters that I will have to manually approve people to down to sort of be able to use the apps. But I'll do that as sort of fast as I can. And we have one problem with um, Hotmail accounts, which is some of my email is bouncing to Hotmail. If that's the case, ping me on Messenger, post in the group, and I'll, I'll get you sorted out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me go back to the questions. So, um, going down, going down, going down. So, if somebody wants to know, uh, put yourself on the big screen. Um, geez, okay, there's quite a few questions. Um, okay, let, let me. I'll take the screen share off now. So, right, will there be a tutorial to refer to? Yeah, coming soon. Can you demo the app on your phone? I tried. Um, can we see this webinar again? I've done that. Where do we sign up? So, I've posted two links. Would this be able to replace the Nita Price service? Um, oh, I, I don't use Nita Price. So like, I have been speaking to Luke Pastor about what else we could use to make it really useful for booksellers. We have added a, a used price section, so we do, we, it's an option. We can display the used prices. There's other bits we are looking at doing for the actual, um, for book, especially for used books. Uh, but we do not, I think I saw this question before, we have to be online. We, 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 we sort of work with too much information to be storing it on your phone. Like in the UK, there's a hundred million products. Um, when it, as we show you all the other marketplaces, that'd be like 600 million thereabouts products. There's just too much information for us to do it offline at this time. I will look at doing an offline version, but it'll be much less information. Right. Yeah. So I'm trying to work up what John says, what Phil said. I don't know what Phil said. Um, the phone demo, which I tried, is a bit awkward when I'm on webcam. I'm sure like, if you join the group, other people in the group will post what their experience has been. I've had various sort of thank you emails and photographs of Cholly full, Cholly's full of stuff. Well, Cholly's full of profit. Um, Adam asked, what, would this be able to replace Nita Pricer? It's, it's a different sort of tool to Nita Pricer. Right. When can I sign up? Yeah, you can sign up today. I'll post a couple of links. Um, I will post these in the group as well. So yeah, out the cards available after the webinar. Does this work just as well for used items? Right. Um, when I go back to the screen, I will show you how it works with used. Again, second books. Yes, I will show you how it works with books. Very good price. Thank you. Will there be a de no, not an amount of at this time? Take my money, yes, please. Um, yeah, Amanda's made a chunk of money out of this. Like Amanda does a lot of wholesale, and she uses the web version to like look at the wholesale pricing. I know she's made I think it's six, well six plus figures from using this tool. Um, I'll even sell you the wholesale. Well, it's not even a wholesaler really. It's Avon. Um, I never knew you could make that much money out of it. But if anybody wants a connection there. Let me know. Amanda's an expert. She made, she's made an absolute fortune. Um, will it include a reprice at some point? No, I don't think so. Um, like I've got, I use different reprices. I've got my own software to reprice my own stuff. It's not really an area I want to get into, to be honest. But I never say no. Um, Alison says, put yourself on the big screen. I think I have. Big screen, please. Yes. And large video. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you don't want to see me on the big screen if I want to see SAS on the big screen. Oh, well. There isn't really a need for demo. It's self-explanatory and really easy. Thank you. I've, I've tried to make it really self-explanatory. 
Um, full screen again. False Adam. Yeah, no offline mode is things down. Like if there is an offline mode, it will be a different app. I, I, the way SAS, the way of architecture SAS, it isn't designed to do offline. Share the video you have already made. I've made loads of bloody videos. Um, actually, actually, yeah, I've got mobile videos. If you go into the SAS group, actually, there are there will be some mobile videos. And if anybody's using it and wants to post a video in the SAS group, yeah, please do. Um, I'm hoping that's wife Alison that wants to see me. Um, good question, my dear space mode. Okay, I think you've answered that one. So, my mum is supposed to group again. Thank you. Um, simply scan a product, and all the info you need pops up. Cannot wait to get started. Good. It's like I, I wish I'd had this years ago. Like I employed somebody for a year to drive around in a white van and do RA for me. Like she did really good, but if she had this, it should have done so much better. You're right. Greg literally paused using it to watch this webinar. It was working perfect and very easy to use. Thank you, Greg. Can you type in the product name instead of scanning? Yes, you can. On all versions, you've got a text box which you can type into. Um, yeah, in the text box, you can put an asset in, you can put a barcode in, or you can put like free text in. We're only, we're only looking in the title at the moment, so you need to like think what text will be in the title. Uh, does it show you if Amazon are selling the products? Yes, it does. Um, when you're looking at the um, sales, you've got your Amazon price. So if Amazon's got a price, Amazon's selling it. And then you can look at the uh, like 30, 60, 90 day history and see if Amazon have ever been on the listing. I have got some other features I want to add in, which I won't say what they are now, but that'll help even more. If the barcode isn't accessible, you need to switch to the Amazon selling app. Once you have the ASIN, can you paste it into? Yes, you can. You can. It, it's a normal edit box on SAS. You can paste what you want in there. How long is the offer valid for? Oh, it's closed now. No, um, yeah, I don't know. It, I'm not going to close it. So I'm not going to put a, a false window on this. Like, if um, it's it's going to be at least until the end of the month. Probably be longer than that because I, I want to make sure it's perfect before. I release it to um, to other marketplaces, and yeah, it, it'll be it'll be a while. You don't have to sign up today. Yeah, please do. But you don't have to. I'm not going to say yeah. You can sign up now, and otherwise the price goes up tomorrow. But I'm not a salesperson. Um, okay, my two links: they're getting serious and they're getting started. Is there a free trial available? Not at yeah, this beta stage. There isn't. No, there will be when it's released. I expect. Um, I've got a good plan for that, actually, but I won't go into that here. But yeah, not, not at the moment. Is there VAT on the subscription? No, there is not. I've, I've actually formed a new company to do this. So these prices, there's no VAT on it. So you can't claim VAT back, but you're not paying VAT either. Um, at some point, I expect I'll have to VAT register this company. You're going to be a busy boy this evening. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Liam, why do you, why do we need to switch from private beta to public? Um, basically, I want more people to use it. Um, like, like the private beta has been great. If we keep it in private beta forever, I'll probably go bankrupt. Um, so yeah, probably get a bit of money coming in from the public beta. I want more people to use it. Make make sure it's actually a legitimate project, which I'm pretty sure it is. John, I'm confused about the thousand scans. So if I look at a product online, it will automatically count as one scan. Yeah, if you SAS a product, so yeah, that is a scan. Um, whether you you look at the product via the mobile app, the extension, or the web app, that is a scan. Like the, the thousand scans, it's it's a lot. Um, and I I will revisit that. But I think if people are using so 1,200, I would probably increase the limit to be honest. Um, that's a number that I've picked by looking at how people have used it so far. And the, it's typically quite a lot of people use it less than a thousand. And what I find is when people do more than a thousand scans, it's more like two thousand, three, four, even five thousand plus. And, and a thousand scans is monthly. Right. Once you scan a product, will the listings be saved in a database or history file? Yes, there is a history of scans. When I go back to the app, I will show you that. And you can access the history either on the web app or on a mobile app. Right, Sue, so subscribe. Hey, 
Um, Amanda's posted links in the beta group as well. Thank you, Amanda. Phil, is a £12 test, it's a bit cheeky to ask for a free trial. <laughs> well, yeah, it's worth trying, isn't it? <laughs> um, so subscribe. Like, if anybody's subscribed, please let me know if this is all working okay, because I, I only I finished the subscription part in the early hours this morning. Um, so any issues at all, let me know. I know I've got to post some links of work, how we can get the mobile app, how we can get the extension. Um, okay. Do you download an app from your... Um, you, you download a mobile app to your mobile. Yeah, it's in the Play Store. It's in the Android Store. But at the moment, it's in test. So you will need to get a personal invite to ask you to be able to do it because I've got to add you to a list. It's just the rules that the different app stores have. Um, when Seller Amp is completed, what will it be able to do and will the price include those upgrades? Now, Seller Amp is a company and Seller Amp is a so like SaaS. Any upgrades that go into the SaaS part of it will be included in this price. Um, if there's something major, I will let people know, but at, at this point in time, I can't see it. Any, anything I'll put into SaaS will be included, will be grandfathered in. Like if there is like, say if there was an Alexa app, then yeah, that might be an extra thing. But no, anything like, any sort any SaaS, um, any SaaS panel is gonna be included. Thanks for book help, looking forward to this. Yep. Um, connects with, da -da -da. Having been a user of this for a good length of time, I can tell you this is great, especially when you're asked about everything is in one place. Yep, cheers, Craig. Right. Does it flag a pass No, not as yet, it doesn't. Um, I am looking into, like, one thing with SaaS is it doesn't access your Amazon account. It doesn't access it in the background. It doesn't use MWS for various reasons. Um, and Hazmat is often dependent on your account. I'm, I'm looking at a way to do it. If I find a, a, a good way of doing it, then, yeah, it, it will be, it will, it'll be in one of the panels. Um, like hazmat is it possible? Right, direct your stand up series. Hello, hello. Now, man's gonna do some videos. Excellent. Um, to her, do you anticipate continuous development? Yes, um, there's only so much I can put into it, but yeah, we, we will we will move with the times. Um, so yeah, that like I'm working on other software as well, I'm working a little bit too much to be fair. But yeah, we're not going to just stop developing it. If a new feature comes, what we think is going to be useful, yeah, we'll add it. Yeah, yeah, I'm honestly, yeah, I'll be tinkering. Yes. Um, can we watch your presentation again? Is there a deadline to sign up? No deadline as yet. At some point it will be, but I'll let you know in plenty of time. Yes, you will be able to watch the presentation again. Can I use this cross devices, mobile, tablet, or desktop? Yes, you can. So you, you probably do need to watch your presentation again. <laughs> also, do you need an Amazon business account for this? No, you don't. We don't. We do not use MWS anymore. Uh, initially, we did. Amazon changed the rules of MWS. We, you weren't allowed to use MWS and Keeper. I think Keeper data is really important. So in the end, we chose to use Keeper data and not use MWS. I do use MWS for some other things. But SAS is completely separate. It doesn't use under the US. So no, you don't need to. Kelvin, grandfathered in price. Yes, they are both grandfathered in prices. Only just got home, so I missed the bulk of this. Yes, there will yes, be a replay. Um, what I'll do, if I go back to the um, presentation, I'll, I'll leave it on the pricing screen. Da, da, da. Uh, screen share, PowerPoint presentation. Sure. Okay, so that's on the pricing. Right. Uh, yeah, we've done that. We've got the pricing structures up there on the screen now. Love your humble pitch. Oh, thank you, Amir. Thank you. Um, thank you. I wouldn't have quite as far as a genius, but I'll take it. Um, Again, I'm just going to answer questions rather than reading everything out. So does it use your Amazon Central license keys? No, it does not. Like, um, I'll, I'll get a little bit techy here. Um, to see if you're gated or not, you, 
like you, you couldn't you can do it in an extension because the way extensions work is they kind of access your Amazon account in the background, um, not in, not in a nasty way, but it's not in like uh, sort of the, north, the normal way you do it via MWS. And like yeah, you could do that in an extension fairly easily. You can't do that on a mobile app, and you can't do it on a, on a on a web app because of um, security reasons. But extensions are a bit different. So yeah, so so no, we, we do not access access yours. If we ever do it in the extension, I'll put a massive disclaimer up because like accessing pages on your behalf, I don't like doing that. Um, we keep going. Yes, yes. So it's a it's a monthly cost. I actually yes, it says their price per month. Yeah. Good subscription works smoothly. Thank you. I think so that that was a completed early early hours this morning. Um, when you do register for that, will you be grandfathered into the price, including at this point in time? I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to see all the costs. Like if I can keep the costs like this for you guys, I will. But if it's not practical, then I might have to have VAT on. But I'll let you know. Like I will do my best not to. I hate VAT as much as the next person. Um, um, Emma, do you get stock, seller stock levels? It's being developed now. So at this point in time, it doesn't do it. Will it do it? Yes. Chris, I can guess which Chris this is. Did, did I miss you announce the US release? No, you didn't. I've not, I've not sort of got a date for US release yet. Once I get this bit out of the way and a few other things out of the way, it is a priority. Like, one of the reasons I'm, I won't go into my life story, but I'm looking at moving to the US. So, um, yeah, a US version will have them, definitely. Can it bulk read spreadsheets? Mm, I'm not going to, no, it can't at the moment. Um, what is the annual price? Well, at the moment, you have to a month, monthly price and times it by 12. Um, when we release properly, yeah, there'll, there'll be an annual deal. There's not in this beta phase. So, no, you don't need MWS keys. No, something. Oh, exactly. Anything more you're willing to tell us about future plans for the suite? I've been demoing some bits of the suite now about I think three years ago. If I did the first demo of it, and I, it, it just it kind of got out of hand. So I thought, if I do start, it's quite a smaller package compared to the to the rest of the suite. So um, at some point, I will show you more about the, the rest of Seller the Seller Amp suite, which I'm going to have to change its name now. Seller Amp is now a company. Um, wow, well, I think I. Okay, I think I've caught up the questions. Yeah, I, I think that's all the questions answered. Um, well, so if anybody wants any other sort of demo, any other questions at all, I think Amanda's posted links in the group for how you can sign up. And so the it's, it's strange that you can't even put one offer in. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about, but. Okay, we've got a few people messaging me. I'm obviously not going to read these private messages at the minute, so I hope it's not really important, otherwise I'm going to feel like a bit of a plonker. Um, so, any other questions? Greg says, can we get rid of Keeper? I wouldn't get, I love Keeper. Keeper's great. Like, yeah, we do display your full Keeper charts, but Keeper does other stuff. Like, if you don't need the other stuff, yeah, you could get rid of it. But I like keep it. I think you should keep it. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, if there's no other questions, this, what happens when you hit 1,000 scans? Don't know. I've not coded that bit yet. So I was going to wait until somebody gets there. You'll probably get a warning when you get to so many scans saying, Ooh, do you want to upgrade or something like that? But th that's one bit I've not. Well, I probably shouldn't have said that, should I really? Yes, no, it'll stop working when you hit a thousand scans. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so you'll, you'll get warnings. You, you'll, you'll get a chance to continue. Uh, wow, so we're to do some more demos. 
is Keeper embedded in the app? It depends what you mean by embedded. It's, it's, it's not an interactive Keeper graph, no. It's, um, it's a static image. Like outside of the app, the images will link to the actual keep the interactive keeper one, but you would need to keep a subscription for the interactive one. Like I have got all the keeper data. I at some point I will I will do an interactive keeper chat. Um, I've got some ideas of how I can do an interactive keeper chat that'll be pretty different to everybody else. Um, and that's one which yeah, it's all, I've got a pretty big list of things I want to do. Well, the nice thing is I quite enjoy doing this. So I will, yeah, I, I, I play quite a lot. Like if people follow me, you'll see like, I'll have Alexa sort of talking to stuff. I I, I, I trialed an eBay, an eBay panel the other week and that's going to take a little bit more work. So I just trialed it and took it out. Um, uh, so how will the red flagged products be flagged up? Yeah, we're looking at doing that in one of the panels where if, if, if a brand is known to be um, like infringement sort of heavy or it's possible tribal air and stuff like that, yeah, that's something we're looking at doing in one of the SAS panels. Wow. There you go. Well, I'll hold on for, oh, well, geez, I should have been scrolling up. Sorry, guys. Okay, so there's some more questions. <laughs> well, a similar one, can you explain what happens if I'm using the web app on the getting started package, then my VA tries to use it? Um, there'll be only one active. So basically what would happen if you're on the web app, if you're using it, your VA use it, they'd have to log in, they'd log you out. You'd then basically have to log back in again, which would log your VA out like that. So you won't have live keeper data. Yes, we've got live keeper data. It's just at the moment. Um, okay, I don't really understand what my question is. You might have to ask me more of a question though, because we've got live keeper data, which is how we display a lot of the information. But, okay. When you do reach for VAT, will the grandfather in price? For, okay, I, I've answered this one already, Steve. Um, I will try and keep the price the same. I cannot guarantee it. It all depends on what the running costs are and whether I can include, like if I can absorb the VAT, I will. Um, but that's what I can guarantee at this stage. The year of profit calculations, are they based on buy box price? They're based on whatever sale price you put in. So you can copy it across the um, buy box price or you can copy across the FBM or you can put any sale price like you like in. And yes, yeah, so the your profit calculations will be based on that sale price. And like so typically the euro on the sale price will be in euros. Your cost price is going to be sterling. We do all the exchange rates sort of also magical calculations in the background for you. The spend does it show gated? No, it doesn't. I explained where we do not access your account, your Amazon account at all. So yeah, we don't know if you're gated or not. I explained it in a bit more detail earlier why you can do it in extensions, you can't do it in other ways. And um, if that's something we can do, we will. Alison just subscribed. I'm guessing it's not wife, Alison, otherwise she's a subscribed twice. Um, right. With regards to getting the app, I'll need to go. Basically, if you've subscribed and you want to get the app, PM me or direct message me your email address that's associated with your phone and what your phone is, whether it's iOS or Android, and I will add you to the actual the actual um, test app. So that's the same question, Seb. Okay, got to go. I will sign up soon. Okay, cool, Simon. Right, um, well, I'm, I'm going to do a demonstration of the, of the multiple ma of the other marketplaces again because that's my favourite bit. So, well, do you know what I'll do? I'll just play with the app a little bit so you can see. Uh, okay, so that's in mobile mode at the moment. I will turn mobile mode off. Yeah. 
Oops. Uh, this is not, not even like development mode where I can do all my different debugging bits, so I'll, I'll turn that off. Uh, so expand again. So this one we've got a barcode scanner. I've got like a big pile of test products next to me that I use. This is, oops, it's my backers scanner not working very well. Okay, this is this is actually an Amazon return, annoyingly, because it wasn't the cheapest of products. So here's a Smart Things Hub. Now, is that big enough on your screens? Uh, yeah. yeah. And again, so yeah, so you can see with this week. Switch, switching your marketplaces. So I, I, can, I, can, I can do this one all night, it's great. <laughs> um, so this one, if you're selling it, so you have products, opens a new tab. Oops, not signed in, I won't bother signing in. Um, so these are your storage months, but I can change this. You can see the fees are all changing. So I expand the total fees, you can see your storage fee. It's changing as I change this. I should, like, so I'm displaying the registration box at the moment. So this is showing as not registered. If I did it at a standard rate, you can see how your return investment goes down, your profit goes down. Um, so you get flat rate standard, not registered. We've got not applicable there. That's basically not applicable is what the Amazon calculator does. Um, we're going to use this in other marketplaces. In real life, you should never use not applicable because unfortunately we are all applicable for VAT. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I've said about my app, how I got the app, 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 app. Watching amazing. The subscription will start when you, basically when you sign up. Um, in around real like your market box. Yes, me too. It's great. Uh, Daniel, subscribe. Al, you said it's not possible to use your MWS keys via an app to find out gating, etc. Does that mean it's not possible to do at all or not possible yet? And that really is the holy grail for RA. Um, I could have done, um, I could, there's ways it can be done, but there's no way which is that I know of at the moment that is going to be sort of in, in breach of Amazon terms and conditions. And that's not something I would want to do A for me or A B for any customers. Um, I, I, if I can find a way of doing it, which isn't sort of in breach, I, I'll do it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking into it. I, there's a, I've got ways around lots of things, but that's what I'm not finding a way around just yet. You said previously that, that can't open South Central links. Yes, no, it, no, it can open the links. And they are, um, like opening a link into South Central is one thing. Like actually um, trying to see if you're res um, restricted is something else. And I can't do it from the from the actual mobile because like the mobile app doesn't isn't connected to your Amazon account whatsoever. Alison's going to be godsend. I hope so. Okay, has anybody else got any other questions or anything really? Uh, you know, whilst I'm in here, uh, let me, I will, okay, I'll, I'll turn this back into, it's like into wet mode. So let's say we've got your SAS history. So there's like a history of like different scans that I've done. So in the history, it's, you've got an icon here, it shows you if it's done on the mobile, whether it's done on the extension. I've got another, there's a different icon for the, for the web version. And then you can like go into these and view them. I just my drink for the moment. I drink Heineken Zero alcohol. It's like my go-to drink, it's great. Um, like nobody's selling it at the moment. Cause I'm looking, feel the history. Yeah, you, Amazon used to sell it at four pounds. Pretty decent sales rank. Um, yeah, so it's like going into so into your history. Other thing that I've not actually shown is sometimes you can search something and there might be more than one result. 
And that, this also happens with barcodes. Like if I do a search for Lego, I'm not going to get just one result of Lego. So what we do, we display the results for the Lego search in order of sales rank. Wow, Harry Potter Lego advent calendar, sales rank of one. How crazy is that? So yeah, if you, if you can find somewhere to buy that and make any profits on it, I'll be amazed. Um, right, that's questions. Um, um, I'm not sure Chris is answering there, but you can use Keeper Data because he's not going through MWS. So that's correct. Can you connect a barcode scanner like op? Like in theory, yes, you can because the way back, well, the way most barcode scanners work is it's like a keyboard. It's called a keyboard wedge, where it basically replaces the keyboard. And like, if you're sending something into the text box, it will. You can do it by the keyboard. So it does depend on the scanner. It's not something I've tested yet. I think somebody mentioned it quite a while ago, actually. So if, if there's demand for it, I'll buy myself one of these scanners and I'll I'll make it work. Like that might be a case of having to modify the app to do it. But yeah, so at this point in time, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, you won't find a SaaS app in the Android Play Store. You'll need to contact me because it is in beta. Um, and it's, it's not public beta at the minute in the App Store. Um, I will be making the Android app public very soon. I didn't want to do it before this webinar, just in case something went wrong. Um, Final question. Um, FBA Wizard and Source Mogul have all had issues using the Keeper data for licensing issues. Yeah, I think that's what Chris answered. Yeah, this is because, like, you, if, you, if you're using MWS, which, like, they are, you cannot use Keeper data. I had a big conversation with Ed from Source Mogul. I think I actually pointed it out to him about this new MWS rule. I know Ed's got a great solution. I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm up talking to Ed. We might do something together. We'll, we'll see about that. I, I do talk to quite a few other tool owners, and we do help each other. Um, is a Facebook group for SaaS? There's one for Celeramp as a whole, which like is the SaaS sort of beats testing. So yes, Amanda's posted a link to it. Hopefully, she'll post another link to it. But please, yeah, get in the group. All right, we'll we'll help you as much as we can. So John, he hasn't done a retail hour charge in shops yet. How do I check whether I'm gated in the shop? You'd, you'd have to open your Amazon seller app to see if you're gated or not. How long for the Apple version? The, the, the Apple version's done. It, it's, it's, it's in the App Store, but with, uh, when you're releasing apps, with Apple, they, they use what, what's called test flight to test the apps. So once you send me your email address, I will add it into onto the Apple sort of site and then they'll, you get instructions of how you can install it via test flight. And then you can you, you just be able to use it like a normal app. Um, like I will be making the apps public as soon as possible. I just didn't want to do it before this webinar. Because sometimes with web stores, they review things and it can take a while. Like, because I'll know I'm dealing with like three different web stores. You've got the Chrome web store for the extension, Android Play Store, and the Apple iOS store. And like, they've all got different rules, regulations. You've got to jump through different hoops and do different things. And yeah, it's, it's fun. Says nobody. Um, yeah, Mark, don't give me the email in here now because I, this will take me a little while. Cause I've, got, I've got to say, so I've got to open up the back end of the, of the, the my developer accounts in the different stores to add it. But yeah, I will add, I will add, I will add a bunch of these tonight before I go to bed. Yeah, if you're already on test flight, again, I will have to add you to the, the, um, I will at least sort of the SAS app and then it will appear in your test flight. I saw the app last night on the Chrome store. Right, the app, the app is in the Chrome extension store. Yes, that is public now. Um, it's not on the Play Store, which is your which is your Google Android Store. Can I watch this later? Yes, um, there will be a replay. It's the first webinar I've actually hosted, so 
It says you can, so I'm assuming you can, yes. Will the app show the number of sellers and stock constitute of sellers in the future? Yes, it will. And did you use it? Okay, so to her, it's talking to Amanda rather than me. That's fine. <laughs> well, I think I can now have one of my Heineken Zeros. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a few seconds to see if there's any other questions. Um, I will. Uh, I'm going to have to ask somebody how they've managed to do multiple offers and then put the offers out there. John, I looked at the seller app and can't see how to add a product in the seller app. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean there. Does it? Actually, I'll do a very quick demo of um, how the, uh, the the book one will be optimized. So with this, I've got my profile. I'll turn on show used prices. Um, what's going to be a good book to search for? Uh, I'll do Game of Thrones. Got the end of Game of Thrones, that was a killer. Um, okay, so Game of Thrones, a few things come up. Got uh, one of the pop ones. Uh, so, yeah, so we, we show, so we show the used prices like new, very good. Like in this case, it hasn't got any. I'll look at the average to see if it ever did. Great, I'm clicking on the actual presentation rather than on the screen. Rather than on the actual results screen, that's not going to work. Okay, looking at that, yeah, it's it's never had any used. So I'm doing a uh, book. Uh, Somebody give me a book title. My mind's just gone blank. Uh, Stephen King. Okay. What's it? I don't think fiction books are particularly good, but we'll try it. Stephen King. There's going to be hundreds of these. And again, this is sorted in. Or sales rank order. Go for it. Looks like a popular one. Okay. So, okay. That's it. so it's got a use account to 13. Uh, this is the average. So what I'm going to do, last like 16 hours ago, I'll update this now. Like you can see on the keeper graph, it does actually show the used prices. So doing the update now, yes, yeah, so you can see very good one, 12 on 13, good, 10.43. So you've got no buy box with this. Yeah, so that's what like, the used prices are like at the moment. I will be adding this. There's quite a lot of other bits of information that'll be really useful for people doing use for doing used books. Um, have I missed any? Oh, Chris said Stephen King. It's yeah, I could have done this, couldn't I? I won't just search for it because that's going to say lots actually. If I Copy and paste. Uh, Stephen King. It's okay. There's a few other things more popular than the book. And again, yeah. So you, you see, you've got, you've got the used prices there. And you, that's where you, you can actually look like from thirty day average was X amount. But you can see the actual used seller count it was only not average nine. Th so there's probably there's a lot of information here which I haven't really even considered how useful it actually could be. Well, thank you, sir. Turns game changer. God, I hate that phrase, man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, like I said, I'm, I'm not a salesy person. I'm, I'm really hoping this stuff kind of sells itself, which touch wood. All the reactions I've seen so far have been very positive. Um, thank you, Amanda, for. Posting links. Um, there's a much difference between Apple and Android versions. No, um, no, like, no, there isn't. There's um, they're, they're both sort of running, running off like the same code base as such. They've got like you've got minor differences, but no, they, they should both they should both run the same. Like I, I, I develop on iOS, but I test on Android as I go along. I think I'm testing on a S5 and various iOS devices. Yeah. There's quite a lot of different moving parts in this. It's, 
if you ever, ever get me in person, what a technical conversation about it. There's a lot to it. I was going to display a diagram of how all of it's linked together, but I'm like you want to use it, you don't really care about how it works behind the scenes. But I do want to share that with somebody because it's quite. I'm, I, I kind of get geeked out about stuff like that. Okay, I think um, can't get the extension to work on Mac Chrome. Right, we're going to have to. We'll, we can post that in the um, in the groups. Like, yeah, we'll work out why that is. Like, I, I, I'm on Mac. I'm, I use Chrome. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll help you get it working, Mac. Okay, I'll I will hold on to however long. Um, I'd I, I have to look at my phone because I know my phone's been pinging with messages off people. I'm hoping it's all like nice messages and not this is whatever. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, I'm gonna. What I will very, very quickly do, I'll go through the slides again for anybody that missed them, if they came in late. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be really quick. Um, like, so feel free to hang up and if you've, you've seen enough, I'm only going to be repeating myself. So back to slides. See if I can do this a bit quicker. Um, PowerPoint. Yeah. Like, um, when you send an email to download the app, please, your best off is um, messaging me on Facebook at the moment. Um, right. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, you know, I'll type, if you do a search for Al Carlton, you can, if you DM me, I'll, I will check all the DMs. Um, I won't ask you to post your email address in here because, like, Lots of other people can see. I'm sure everyone is very nice, but you don't want to be posting your email address publicly. Um, actually, you can send it. He says now posting his email address publicly. So you send it to info at selleramp.com. That will get to me and I will add them in. All right, so very quick run through the presentation. So if you've already seen it, you don't need to see it again. Um, so yeah, about me, I've been doing it for years. I've sold a fair bit. I've done various different Amazon business models. I invest, build up software, blah, blah, blah. Right, two bits here. Let's skill that's not there. So yeah, mobile app, web app, Chrome extension. Mobile app, yep, you scan, it shows your results. You manually search, it will show you the results. Chrome extension, select your text, right click. It will search on your website, just about. On an, Amazon, on an Amazon page, if it's active, it'll automatically show you the price to buy it at to, to make your desired profit. The web app, yeah, it runs on any device responsive to your screen. You can access the history. You can do the history on the mobile app as well. So SaaS Brain does the work. It's like cloud-based. Different panels, yeah, so post about the product. I don't have an issue. I would change images, but so you can show multiple images that you identify your product. Yeah. Sales ranking prices panel shows you exactly what it says. Um, you can change the averages, blah, 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 blah. Right. So the max cost, max cost price is it the max cost to meet your criteria? We're going to make this look a little bit nicer, but it's quite boring at the moment. I'm going to make it stand out so it's really obvious that. Your max cost in this case is nine pound eighteen. Keep graphs. I won't explain what they are. I think it's pretty obvious. If you ever want to know how to read um, keep graphs really well, Tom Parkinson has done a fantastic video. It's a fast track FBA. His video is great explaining how to read keep graphs. I know uh, Natalie from Secret Wealth. She also does is really knowledgeable in keep graphs. So either of them, so if you see a video or talk of one of them. It's, it's well worth listening to. So the profit calculator, which shit changes in real time when you change things. Um, it shows you your fees. Take them to VAT, blah, blah, blah. So the other marketplaces, like I said, my favorite bit, exchange rates hourly. You click on one of these and it will automatically show in your marketplace. 
Like, do not overlook other marketplaces. You can make a lot of money in there. But if you're not careful, you can also lose a lot of money in there. Your EFN fees are high. I'm surprised nobody's asked about Brexit. What are we going to do? Don't know. As soon as we find out what's